You can't just do it willy-nilly, right? And that's me using the phrase willy-nilly because I want to appeal to you older guys. You can't just throw it in, right? You have to be smart with your intensity work. What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Rugby Muscle. I'm TJ as always and today we're going to be discussing how to keep playing and enjoying rugby as you age. We've got four tips. Let's get right into them. But before I do, I'm actually going to have to reorganize this background because I've just realized I've messed it up. And I'm also going to suggest, well actually I'm going to introduce you to this. We're back using the, uh, the slideshow. I do think it's an easier way to do the videos and it's a much better way for me to get them out to you. And I think it keeps it visual for those that are watching on the YouTube channel. So, uh, comment below, let me know if, if you prefer these types of videos or if you prefer just me talking with some videos of the action that I'm talking about, however you prefer it, let me know in the comments below. Also, if you're new, hit subscribe, hit that notification bell because I'll be doing more videos like this that you'll be interested in. Plus, it helps me out a lot. And if you uh, wanna hit thumbs up, please do so. It takes not even a second. It really helps us out. Any comments below, of course, even if they're just for the algorithm, are much appreciated. So, let's get into it. So. The four tips, the really important factors that I want to discuss are seen on the screen now. So controlling volume in your training, don't be afraid of pump work, don't be afraid of high intensity, and keep it moving. Now these are the physical that are applied. If you want me to go, I can go into another video where we're going to talk about mental factors and mental models that we can use. But in this video, I'm talking just about the physical, the training, that sort of thing. So this applies to all aging athletes. If you're someone, and I said, I said aging, not Asian, but it does also apply to Asian athletes, I guess. So the, the idea of this is that we are all aging, right? Like everyone is getting older. That's the point, right? So as you age, doesn't just mean, oh, okay, I'm 40, now I'm starting aging. No, you start the aging process from when you were born, right? So when we say we age, we don't necessarily mean, and, and what this, these physical tips apply to not are, are not just the age as in uh, the years that are going by, it's the use, the wear and tear. If you think about a car that you know you, you just the car comes out of the factory right it degrades as you use it it also will just degrade over time if it's just sat there in the garage but it's going to be a lot different to how it would be than if you you know took it out every single day used it on a real heavy commute commute or a long commute or you know depending on how well you took care of it over time like all of these are different factors into how different the aging process can be and, and, and how you can react. So these are, yes, they're physical themes and they're tips, but they're also like, you know, there is, a, there is a scope that you can use and apply all of these methods. So first and foremost, finding your balance, controlling your volume within your training. It's not finding the balance as in doing lots of balance work, that, that's just, you know, balance comes from strength. If you can contract the muscle well, you can control it, you can, you can find your balance. The idea here is that you, you want to be more efficient with your training volume, right? You do need to do more as you, once you pass puberty pretty much, you, you need to keep doing more and more and more to gain more physical components. By that I mean if you're, as you're getting older, um, it becomes much more challenging to get faster, it becomes much more challenging to gain muscle. You know, when you're primed is when your body is actually growing as a teenager, as a Maybe even in your early 20s, you can still be primed to grow. If you, you know, go back to the car example, if you've already you know, pushed your car to the limit, it's probably more difficult to then keep pushing it to the limit. Whereas if you've never done it, you know, that limit actually will be exposed by doing that, uh, that, taking that car out. So depending on your training age, you kind of still need to keep doing more. If, you, if you're 45, right, and you've never been to the gym, man, like, you, you don't need to do more, well, I mean, I guess you do because you've not done anything before. So actually, yes, you do. You need to do more no matter what, right? You need to do more always, 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 always. Something is more than nothing, and then as over time, as you get stronger, as you get better, you need to do more to get essentially less, right? You get less results from the more you go on. Hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't, let me know in the comments below. This is where the balance comes from because you can't just keep adding more and more and more onto your plate, not just because time is a factor, but also because you cannot recover the same as you get older. Think about when you were drinking, when you were whatever legal age it is in your country, um, you would go out drinking and you would, uh, I distinctly remember being an 18 year old and think, oof, that was the worst hangover I've ever had. And the hangover lasted an hour, right? Now, 
I'll drink a couple of glasses of wine. I'll be, I'll be feeling it for like two days, you know? Um, that's the body not being as good at recovering as it used to be before. The same thing applies to, if we go back to the car analogy, the wear and tear of your joints, right? It's not just 20 years of living, it's 20 years of smashing into other people, uh, using your shoulder, which is a very uh, dodgy joint at the best of times, right? To hit people as hard as you can with as much force going through that shoulder. That's going to inhibit your recovery. Um, also, you know, your muscles just don't recover as well, depending on, you know, the, the stage that you're in. So what you need to do is find that balance. It becomes a lot more difficult as you age to find that balance. Essentially what you've got is, you've got an area here which is not enough training. You've got an area here which is too much training. As, you're, you, know, as you age, the, the sweet spot gets smaller and smaller and smaller because you need more to get more results, but you also can recover from less, right? You, you can't, yeah, you can't recover from more. So it won't be what it was when you were younger. You just have to accept that and you have to find and dial into that volume. You still need to train. You need to do more no matter what, right? Potentially that means like more focus on the physical aspects that you want. But I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. Let's get into the next point. Not being afraid of pump work. This is a huge tip. So, you know, overall meta sort of idea, finding that balance, finding that volume. This is a little bit more specific. It's, it's what you should be doing. You should be doing a lot more pump work. Not all training needs to be crazy intense. Low intensity work for conditioning, tempos for speed and agility. Th those are two fantastic ways to develop the aerobic system. Then we're looking at when we're doing uh, strength work or a hypertrophy work, we can look at a lot more isolation work. That doesn't mean exclusively isolation work, but it means that you can also use methods uh, and take advantage of methods like pre-fatiguing the muscles so that you don't have to constantly push lots and lots and lots and lots of weight. When I get my squat to my strongest, for the times when I'm, I'm really pushing my squat, I, I will often pre-fatigue it so that I don't have to put so much weight on my back and have to squat so like such a huge amount. It's not a huge amount, but it feels really heavy, right? And still I will get that bone, the, the benefit of pushing all of that musculature that I would use for the squat to its limit without actually using you know, needing the extra weight. So for example, if I was using 160 kilograms, I would get that same effect from 130 kilograms. The body still doesn't, doesn't know the actual weight, it just knows how hard it's pushing. The same example could be used if you're training in the morning when it's a suboptimal or you're training whatever suboptimal conditions. Doesn't mean that you're not pushing yourself because you're not pushing as much literal weight. You're still pushing yourself relatively as hard as you can. So. Isolation work can absolutely work wonders for your, for your strength and your hypertrophy gains. Um, all of this stuff in conjunction, right, the, the, lower, the lower intensity stuff, the pump work, allows you to get through more volume. It also potentiates um, improvement in other areas, right? So if you've got more volume, if you're getting vo more volume through your legs, you're, you're potentiating more uh, strength potentially because you might be growing your, your legs. You're also potentiating more uh, speed. You're also, if you're doing your aerobic work, you're potentiating more um, gains in the gym because of the other things that you're doing because you, you, don't need, you can recover better if your aerobic system is better and you can get through more training because your aerobic system allows you to recover much better. It's also obviously much friendlier on your joints as I've already described and like you're still getting out, you're still getting that workout, you're still, you can still get after it on these conditioning sessions or the pump sessions, but it's just not the exact same. It's not just pushing, like smashing your head against a brick wall, right? So like, I, and I, you know, and, and this, this is, falls hard on people because I see a lot of people when they're in the gym and they'll be, um, they'll be using, you know, the elbow pads and they'll be curling 60 kilos on, on the barbell. Like, you do that because you love it, but it's also wrecked you, right? So you have to acknowledge it. If you're someone that has already pushed themselves too hard to, and, and you know, burnt yourself into the ground, like understand that where that's put in your body, right? And understand that you can still absolutely train, but it ha just has to be altered. The other thing I would also say is if you're someone who has not done too much, this, this is not difficult, right? This is not... Um, going to completely take it out of you. This is gonna get you feeling really bloody good and give you more energy. And, and that's also a factor and something that you should definitely be aiming for as you age. 
Now, this isn't necessarily to say that you have to train like a bodybuilder or even like Ron Burgundy doing a thousand reps or even like Alex Viada here doing two hour trail runs. You just need to be aware of the intensity that you, you can train at and that you can really make significant improvements at. And the low intensity stuff can be absolutely magic. Now, the next thing is to not be afraid of high intensity. Yes. Don't be afraid of low intensity because you're still going to improve, but also don't be afraid of the high intensity stuff because it's in small doses, it's not going to kill you. Not only that, but you need to train it if you're going to play rugby. You can't play rugby at a, I mean, I guess you can play rugby at low intensity. Um, you know, pick, pick your joke that could be had there. I'm not going to go for it, right? It's too low hanging fruit. You get the point, right? The rugby is a sport where you're going to sprint, where you're going to collide, you're going to use explosive power. You need to train those things if you want to keep up your performance or if you want to, I mean, especially if you want to improve your performance. Um, obviously, keeping muscularly fit, so the pump work, um, keeping, uh, keeping muscular and fit, should I say, the pump work, the cardio work, all of that stuff will absolutely help because that's going to help you recover from your high intensity efforts. But you also need to train at that high intensity to quote unquote remind the body that it has that capability and obviously then keep pushing and extending that capability, right? It's that almost that use it or lose it capacity. If you never sprint, your body's just gonna say, okay, that's, we don't need all of this fast twitch stuff because we're, you know, we, we, we just don't use it, okay? And if you're just using it in the games, like that's only a small exposure. You want to really train the high intensity stuff and improve at that stuff. But with that being said, you have to, this goes back to the first tip where we're talking about the balancing act. You can't just do it willy nilly, right? And that's me using the phrase willy nilly because I want to appeal to you older guys. You can't just throw it in, right? You have to be smart with your intensity work. You want to, you know, think about not just necessarily like sprinting as fast as you can, but moving as efficiently as you can, right? Uh, efficiency is key here. If you can move better, if you can step better, if you can control your body better, that will help with the high intensity stuff without you know completely depleting you yes when it comes to actually you know really increasing your strength really increasing your power really increasing your speed you're going to have to produce enough force but you don't have to do 15 sets of 20 sprints right you you just have to do enough and that could be as little as you know four to five sprints every few days i'm desperate to sneeze but i, I can't get it out of me damn it we'll move on anyway, right? So the high intensity stuff still needs to be done. It can't just be, oh, I'm old now, I can't do the high intensity stuff. No, you still have to train it fairly regularly, especially if you're in season and you wanna make those improvements and you wanna keep those gains. But you, you can't just, that can't make up the majority of your training. You still have to use it and be really smart with it. This is something that a lot of our, you know, they'll, they'll fall into one of those two camps. They'll be either afraid of, uh, the low intensity work because they think it's bullshit and they're not going to get enough out of it or they'll be afraid of the high intensity stuff because they say oh my joints my joints because they haven't done any of the low intensity stuff right you've got to find that balance and that's really what it's about but actually what it really is all about is to get moving or if you're already moving keep moving waiting around is useless complain about your age yes i totally understand it but it's useless the best age to, to play rugby is right now. This is the only opportunity you have. You can't go back in time. You can't say, oh, I wish I was younger. Or you can't, uh, you can say, I wish I was younger. You can't actually go and be younger. That's not the point. Your body and your the age of your body and how you can perform is going to be governed by the stuff that you do, not by the excuses that you make or the theories or the whatever. You just have to figure out what you can do and go about doing it. Like, Rugby is there for enjoyment. And we'll talk about this when we talk about mental models uh, potentially in a future video. If you'd like to watch that video, please comment below. I'll probably do it next week if, if, if it gets enough traction. But understand that like uh, enjoying the game is, is, is what it's about, right? And you want to keep doing that. And if you want to keep doing that, then I suggest you do some level of training. You keep up with it. Movement is medicine. And it's not just about improving your performance, but it's about stopping you from getting injured. It's about, and if you just keep playing rugby and you don't get injured, like because of your experience, I guess you're going to improve, right? You're going to get more and more and more experience and therefore problem solve better and better and better as a player. 
not just like physically, but uh, mentally. Like rugby is not just a physical game. And just because you've got older, it doesn't mean that you have to put this stuff on a pedestal, right? Um, like t training doesn't have to be, oh, you know, it was so much easier before, I, I guess I can't do it. No, just, just get do whatever you can. Same thing with playing, really. Like you can just go about playing and, and over time, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. There's no age where you have to stop playing, right? There's limitations and there's obviously declines and whatnot, but we can combat that quite a lot with adequate and smart rugby training, as we're gonna see in a second. When I say rugby training, I mean strength and conditioning, right? Age really is just a, a, a number that we apply for the amount of years that you have spent on this earth living. It doesn't mean to say all of that stuff that how you've been using that car, right? It's the date that the car came out of the shop versus what you've been doing with that car. And not just what you've been doing as far as driving it, but what you've been doing as far as maintaining it, maintaining it, you know, swapping out pieces or putting oil in it or whatever people do with cars. I still, I keep using car analogies, but I don't know cars very well. So I'll talk about mental models and stuff. I think I've, I've, me just discussing this video right now has made me think that we can absolutely discuss that in a future video. Again, let me know in the comments below if that's something that you would like to see. So one final thing, we've done our four tips, but I think something that I think you can all take away from is to get inspired because a lot of us don't know, you know, we see rugby on a TV and we see lots of guys that are in their early 20s or whatever running around and they're so fit and you think, Jesus, like, this is crazy. Or you see a local first team down the pitch and, and they're all young and they're studs or whatever. It feels crazy, but here are pictures of all guys either in their late 30s or early 40s. Uh, I don't know, Tom Brady might even be bloody late for it at this point. And they are all still performing at, a, at their top level, right? So you've got Ronaldo, you've got uh, uh, Quade Cooper, who made a resurgence even, like as he's gotten older. Same with um, James O'Connor, almost forgot his name there. He's made a bit of a resurgence and he's been around since he was 17, you know? So we're not looking at in terms of like him reaching levels that he's not been at, right? He was always a wallaby, he's always been talented. But he's managed to use that talent and, and hone on in on his physical abilities even as he's gotten older. He hasn't, there's no real huge decline that you can see in this game. Alan Wynne Jones, man, like what that guy manages to endure and go through and, and still keep playing is phenomenal. Sergio Parise, I think he's 38 at the time of me recording this video and, he, video and he's still playing top level rugby with Toulon and he doesn't appear to be declining. He, he's even talking about doing another season because. He's not even seeing too much of a physical decline in terms of his performance. He's just got to be more selective, right? He's, he's, he's thinking about that balance. I've also got a picture of my client here, Eric, who has gone through knee surgery, shoulder ops, and he's still uh, working his way back to playing rugby again. This is him uh, at 42, smashing a guy on his local pitch. You know, he's still playing some of his best rugby, right? He didn't have that high level to start with. We can go back to that analogy with the car probably overdone by this point, so you get the point, right? He, um, he's still managing to play, and this is things that you can do. And then at the bottom right, we've got Mark Bright, who has been in a championship for, I think it's like 12 to 14 years now, and he went there when he was like 30. He's, I think he's 43 at this point, and he's one of the top try scorers in the championship. And if you don't know, the championship is the, the level below the English premiership. So at 43, he is still performing really, really well. It is absolutely, uh, possible for you to keep playing rugby as you age. Um, as, as far as mental models go and as far as how you should consider it, I'll talk about more in the other video, but I will finish with this, right? Like, just focus on what you can improve and how you can be better. And that is going to help you, you know, really like understand what it is that you're trying to achieve with this rugby stuff as you age. It's not necessarily glory, right? It's just being able to have fun and enjoying the game of rugby as you age. And a training can be a huge factor of that. If you apply these four tips, I really do think you'll find it massively beneficial. Of course, all of these four tips are included when we talk about uh, team rugby muscle and all the different trainings that we offer over at Rugby Muscle. So if you're someone that doesn't want to apply all of this thinking and try to find that balance yourself and uh, question what sorts of things that you want to train and whatnot, Check out the links below because we've got Rugby Muscle Elite, which is one-on-one -on -one coaching with your boy, where we will like really, I will take the reins and I will be your mechanic for your car and I'll, I'll just be in charge of everything. Or Team Rugby Muscle, which is a program delivered to your uh, email inbox once a month, 
regularly updated. We've got a whole backlog of well over a year's worth of training, also there, access to live Q&As, all that good stuff. You can find all of the details for that stuff in the description below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you found this video useful. If you did and you haven't given it a thumbs up or, or commented below, please do those two things. Subscribe, keep that notification, click that notification bell, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.